Hi Ripper friends, I would like to share with you something I've been recently working on. It's another approach of writing control surface drivers that will seamlessly integrate with your MIDI controller with Reaper. An interesting thing here is the approach itself, not the driver so much. Because I've been researching the problem for several hours and I didn't find any solution that meets the following three conditions. First, a Rikin driver should not require any prerequisites, any kind of extensions, plugins or third-party software. Second, it should be straightforward to develop and debug. Third, it should be cross-system, meaning that you write the same code and it works everywhere. Don't get me wrong, the solutions I've come across are very creative and I admire the work of these people. But I decided to try something different and see how far I can get. So I created such initial prototype and verified that it meets this criteria. And also it's uh, flexible enough to meet the functionality requirements that you would normally have for a dog controller. I will first show you what it does and what it can potentially do and then I will explain the approach itself. So there are at least three common tasks uh, that you perform with your DAO controllers. Transport functions, for example, play, stop, record, track control, like volume, pan, solo, mute, and UI manipulations, like open different windows, effects, selections, and so on. Also, what you would expect uh, from a driver is to keep in sync the DAW UI with your controller, meaning that if your controller supports some kind of visual indication, in my case the buttons light up when activated, then uh, the DAW should notify the controller. In other words, there should be two-way communication between the two. Let's see it in action. Here I click on the play button on the MIDI controller and Reaper starts playing the mix, but if I stop it from Reaper, the button lights goes off. This is example of feedback and it's very powerful because in this manner you can exploit the full potential of your controller if it allows MIDI control functions. You should be able to control track parameters. In my case I implemented it with track select. Once track is selected you can change volume, mute it, solo it and so on. For the example, I simply toggle the MIDI Explorer, something that I personally find very handy. This example shows that you can do all kinds of crazy stuff, you can find full list of supported Reaper commands in a link in the description. There is also a link to the GitHub repository for this example and other useful information. So how does it work? You probably know of that cool feature in Reaper where you can control it remotely from any device in your vocal network. So if we go here in Options, Preferences and go to Control OSC Web and click Add, we choose from this list Web Browser Interface and we keep the default options. We copy this link and hit OK. Now when we go to the browser, you see this graphical user interface. From here you can control a Reaper. For instance you can play, stop and you see when I hit play the mix start playing but when I hit stop here in Reaper it reflects in the UI. You can do all the basic stuff from here like muting tracks, selecting them, changing the volume, solo them and so on. So I said to myself what if I change this graphical user interface with basically MIDI interface and intercept incoming MIDI messages from my controllers and based on that message I sent the corresponding commands to Reaper. Intercepting the MIDI messages is actually the easiest part. As you can see from my code here, I simply request MIDI access and then iterate over 
all the inputs and outputs. These inputs and outputs are actually the MIDI controllers that are connected to my machine. And uh, for every input I attach this on MIDI message handler that is executed on the on MIDI message event. In this handler I dispatch the appropriate Reaper commands. But how do I know how to send commands and what parameters to pass to them? To understand this, we should take a look in the Reaper code. In this file, main.js, here, the Reaper team provided all the necessary APIs to interact with Reaper. And it's very well documented in this comment section here. So as you can see, there are several uh, important functions for instance, uh, this is the function that we make requests with and you can tell that it receives the string with commands that are colon separated. And there is also this function that makes recurring requests based on some interval. But what form do these commands have? If we scroll down here, we can see what are valid commands. It can be a numeric value in this interval or it can be a string that can contain underscore, digits and letters. Let's first take a look at the second option where we send a string. Based on this string value, Reaper will either set some parameter or return back a status. For instance, if we send this string and track, we request the count of Reaper tracks. If we send this track command, we can receive a full status of the track. If it's folder, if it's selected, if it has FX and all kinds of status information. But also we can trigger actions in Reaper. We can see that function set that says set track, track index, pan and value. This sets the pan with this value of this track index. In this manner, we can control all kinds of stuff in Reaper. But if you don't find the functions that you need here in this API, you can use this first form that you request uh, with a number. And these numbers are actually command codes that you can find a full list on this link that is provided in the description. Actually, there are two lists and you can find all kinds of commands here. There are literally hundreds of them. Lastly, but not least, let's check out the debugging, where this approach really shines. Because this is a simple web application, the traditional workflow that you set a breakpoint in the browser will simply work. But you can also debug in Visual Studio if you prefer. This is done by downloading an extension from Visual Studio Marketplace. I personally prefer this approach. You can see the output here also and the call stack. It's very handy. So thank you guys for watching and if you want to read more about this and actually try it, you can go ahead and check out my GitHub repository. You can also open issues with questions or simply comment below this video. Thank you once again. Bye.